a very special episode because it is one of my favorite science experiments and this is about a special principle. So let me tell you what the principle is later. So let me ask you a question. I have two sheets of paper and I'm going to hold these sheets of paper here and blow air through this passage in between. What do you think will happen to the sheets of paper? Do they come closer to one another? Do they go away from one another? Or there is just no difference? So ask these kind of questions to your students and wait for their answers. And maybe ask them why do they think they predict this will happen. So let me show what happens and you can see what happens here. When you blow air in the passage, you see that the papers down below, the top portion is where I'm holding, down below the papers come towards one another. Generally when you blow air, don't you think the bits of paper which is lying down below will actually move away? Why do the papers come close by? Think about it. And let me show you one more experiment which is extremely interesting for children across all ages which also talks about something similar. And then I will tell you what principle this is and why do we have to learn about this particular principle. So let's look at what the next part of the same principle but a different experiment which is highly interesting is. Let's see that. So the next part of the experiment is with this. So this looks like a big hole, right? Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to open it up. You will see that it seems to be a never-ending hole, which is long this way. And it has the opening on one side here. And it also has another open end on the other side. But I have put a knot here. So it was an open end, but now I've just knotted it up. Now, the question is, I am going to fill this, let me call this a long balloon. I'm going to fill this long balloon just by using the breath. I have to blow inside. So how much time do you think it will take? So you ask children these kind of questions or how many times do you think you'll have to blow into this balloon? 50 times, 100 times, maybe they would give you random answers and say, okay, I challenge you. And I'm going to show you that I can do this with just three breaths. The entire balloon is going to be filled with air with just three breaths. Do you think it's possible? Let me try. I'm just going to keep it here. And I'm going to try three breaths. No way. No way. Is it filled? No. This entire portion of the balloon is not filled. Then how do I say it is three breaths? Well, it is three breaths, but using certain amount of trick and intelligence, knowing the principle behind it. So let us see how I am able to fill this long balloon with just three breaths. Are we ready? Great. Let's start. So, now I've asked someone to hold the other end of the long balloon and I said just three breaths. And remember, earlier I just couldn't when I kept it closed and then I blew. But now I'm going to try using a certain trick. Observe what I do. I have managed to fill the entire balloon this way. Isn't that amazing? Now how did this happen? Let's see the principle of what happens when we do this and how we are able to achieve it. Let's see the next part of the explanation. So how did we do this? When I kept the same balloon closer to my mouth and did it three times, I was not able to fill the balloon because it was only the air which I was blowing was getting into the balloon. So how did I do it the second time? If you noticed carefully, I kept the mouth of the balloon slightly away from my mouth. There has been a certain distance. And then when I blow air into the balloon, so the stream of air which I am blowing, so whenever there is moving air, there is a certain low pressure which is created. Air from all around, because they are at a comparatively high pressure, they gush in to fill 
that low pressure area. So along with my breath, the air around also gushes in to fill that area which is of a slightly lower pressure. So not only my force or the breath of air that I am blowing is filling the balloon, but the air around is also filling the balloon. So the concepts that you learn in this simple balloon experiment, which is which is something which all children across all ages or even adults and teachers with whom I kind of do these workshops enjoy, is because of air. The simple principle of air. And what is that? Whenever there is moving air, there is a low pressure which is created. And air always moves from high pressure to low pressure. And this principle that we do is nothing but Bernoulli's principle. And then children keep asking, why do we have to learn such a principle? This is a fun thing, but then where, where do we see this in real life? So tell them that whenever you have aeroplanes which take off and land, what is actually used is the Bernoulli's principle. You want to know more about it? I think you should go on to research and find out. So children, take this as an opportunity to find out more about Bernoulli's principle. Science is fun. Have fun.